Today we're going to fit a Skywatcher autofocuser onto a Skywatcher ED80 Pro. Uh, this is, as you can see already, this is one I did earlier on the 120 model, so it does fit that model as well. But what we're going to fit onto today is the one above it, which is the 80mm version. So today we're going to put the same bracket on the back of that. Right, this is the new style, later style Skywatcher autofocuser in the white box. Now if you've got get an older version of this, you'll find that it comes in a brown box. Now the only difference is that the brown box version doesn't include a, a battery in it, a 9 volt battery. Whereas I found that once I opened this one, that now they actually also supply a battery as well, which is brilliant. Okay, so what have we got inside the box? Well, obviously we've got a battery that we just spoke of. We've got a piece of uh, sticky back there. Now that's mainly used if you want to stick the control box. Put that on the back and stick that somewhere on your pier or on your telescope. So obviously this is our control box. We've got fast and slow dial here. Backwards and forwards. Got the connection pin port there. And then obviously where your battery would go in the back there. Which are quite fiddly to do up without a battery being in. Right. What else have we got in the beautiful packet? Right. We've also got the lead, which obviously would go from the book control box into the motor. Now you get supplied in this kit anyway, two brackets. Now this one here, the shorter one, smaller one, is for a reflector. And this one here is for the refractor. Got a set of bolts, nuts and bolts, washers, and a couple of Allen keys in there, which is all well and good, which helps us. Finally, we've got the motor itself, which you can see there's the connection there. The motor part there with the Allen keys, slots, grub screws, and the bracket with the two holes on it. Which, when you put them together, you see that those two holes will come together like that, with that being on the bottom of your scope and that sticking out the side. Obviously, finally, some instructions, which are all well and good, but basically, um, mainly this uh, Skywatch autofocuser seems to be made and built for single um, speed focuses um, on the slightly cheaper Skywatcher models, telescope models. Now, as you can see, I've got my 80mm on my EQ6 with my 120 parked on the side just so I can fit it in. Now the first thing we need to do really, and it's a trick I learned from doing it last time, was to first of all rotate the telescope so the crave for the focuser is upside, is facing upwards because it just makes so, things so much easier when it comes to screwing things in. Your screws won't fall on the floor and you won't lose the grub screws and things like that. It just makes it a lot easier to obviously then build the, put the finder back into the bearings as well if it's on its back. So I'm just going to start by just loosening the rings and then just slowly rotating. I'll just take the finder off first and then slowly rotating it round. So it's 
and slightly tightening it up again. So we're now upside down. Now I've also got, as you can see on here, I've got a, uh, probably you can't see, I've got a QHY5 camera on here. So I'm just going to remove this, because we don't want that getting in the way at the moment. I'll then put the cap on the back to keep the dust out. And then we're ready to go. Now the first job, and let's just take off the uh, screw that holds the focuser in place, the acrylic tipped one. Okay, the first thing to do is take off the single speed side. What you need to get is the bigger Allen key of the two. You can't really see this, but there's a grub screw that lines up with a hole on the top here. And what you need to do is rotate that until you find the hole. Find the grub screw and then put your Allen key in and just loosen it. And once you've loosened it enough, you should find that the knob part just comes off. You're just left with the pin. The screw should be still in there. Oh, that's fell out, and I can see it. And here it is. We'll just put this grub screw back in here for a later date, a later use. Now, what we're left with is. I'm just going to dummy this up for you. The bracket will sit like this with the arched, slightly arched piece on top. That will slide onto there, and those brackets will come together like that, screw together. The bracket goes on there over the top. The motor with the metal, with the, this part can come off if you've got other types of uh, telescopes, but I recommend not taking it off because it's very hard to get back on again. So leave it on if you're going to use it with these scopes. Slide it on there, and then the bracket will come up against it. Two screws, and the job's done. So that's how it's going to look in the end. But to get the bracket on, we're going to have to take off the four screws on the focuser. This is where the Allen key comes in again. Now underneath these four screws there are th four rubber washers. And you don't want to lose these washers. So, a good idea to get a white sheet or something like that and put them put it underneath on the floor to catch any of these rubber parts that fall out and you'll see them because they're black fourth one if you take this away, obviously you can see the finder is now flopping. So just lift gently that off. Your finder, let's see if you want to just push it in, but it won't stay, or it might. And then inside is your focuser, which mine looks quite dirty and shredded. But these are the rubber. grommets I was talking about. So I'm just going to lay those back on there gently. Right, we're up to a tricky part now. The tricky part is this. 
you remember our old friend, the hole on the bottom here, which we used when we undid the uh, screw there, sorry, and taken that out. Well, that screw, that hole there, you would have thought that when you slide on the motor, now do you see this grub screw here where my thumb is? When you slide it in, there, as far as it will go, through that hole, you still can't see the grub screw that you need to tighten. And the reason is because it doesn't, there it is, it doesn't go through enough, which is a real shame. They just redesigned these slightly. We could have put that on there, tightened it up, and put it all back on again. And that would have been it. The job would have been done really quickly. But this is the bit that was a bit harder. It's a bit harder, and this is why you had to take this whole thing apart. Now, what you're going to have to do now is, is get to this pin to tighten up that on there. But see, you can see at the moment, there's just no way in there at all. So, if you loosen, can you see this little hole here? If you loosen that one, You should find that whole arm will come off, leaving you with this part. Now, can you see the grub screw here? You loosen that part. Cool. find that the whole barrel comes out. Now what we can do is, we can thread this part back in and out the other end and put on, slide on the allen key. Actually we don't need to put this on yet. We can just slide this part on and then tighten it up. Nice and tight. And then slide this part back into the uh, focus apart. And then slide this part back on. Tighten it back up. Now slide the part back over again to the other side. And turn it upside down. Now there's no hole for that Allen key to go against, so it can go against any part. But what I'd probably do is, as this is now in a fixed position, you really want to be able to line it up on the bottom. So what I'd probably do is get the bracket and line it up now. If you can see that. Now the screw we want to tighten these two together here, these two bracket holes, if you can see those. The two screws that we need are in this small packet here. Two thumb screws. And two washers. What I did was I put the washers on the outside. And 
the thumb screws in. So there we go, that's fixed on there. And what you should also see is you've got obviously your holes are now lined up to those holes ready to put the base back on. So as you see this is still moving. So we just need to tighten up with the small Allen key. This small one here. That is your friend. <laughs> that little hole there. Right, so we're back on. It's tight, it's not going anywhere, obviously. It can't really move because you shouldn't be using the uh, manual focusing arm when you've got the motor on. So the next job is to use these four screws four slightly longer screws which are provided in the pack. These then go into the bracket holes there and we screw them back onto the focuser. What you should be left with in the packet is the reflector type bracket and this extension arm as well. What you'll also have left over are your four screws from the top of the focuser. As Skywatcher have provided these longer, these four longer ones. Are they slightly longer? Mm, not much in it, but we use them anyway. And obviously you'll have left over your single speed bolt there as well. Right as you can see I've screwed in the screws now so it's all ready to go. Hopefully you'll be able to see now with the handset. I've just plugged the handset in, put a battery in the box and if I rotate it on in, in, and out. It's obviously on the fast setting. If I turn that to slow, back again. Send it back to fast. And you can see the uh, tube. See that blue marker on the front disappear and then reappear. You can see that moving there. And that's it. All done. Now what I use with this is this high tech Astro DC focus controller box which has a manual in and out. So you're not losing the use of the uh, of the handset box. It's just you can't control the fast and slow. You don't get that on this box. But what you normally do then is connect that via USB to your PC. It's got a 12 volt connection there, and then the other end goes to your controller. And I bought an extended cable. You can buy a six meter RJ10 connection, it's a telephone cable um, on eBay for about two or three pounds, I got that bargain. Um, and then you can control your focusing system through Focus Max if you're using uh, CCD Soft or Maxim DL. Uh, thoroughly recommended as the focus, once it's been trained via the V-curves, is really spot on.